In this video, we're going to learn how to add debugging support to our unit tests in a React application. We'll also cover many of the debugging features available in VS Code. For an introduction to testing React components, check out my previous video linked here and in the description. This is Coding with Adam, and let's get to the code. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, like, and share. This application was created with NPX Create React App. It's a simple application that displays a welcome message. It has a few components and tests written for those components. Running NPM tests will run all the tests in the application. But how do we debug into the test with a VS Code? You might also be asking, what is debugging? Well, debugging allows us to step through the code to see exactly what is happening. It's a lot more in-depth than using console.log to print messages. Let me show you how it's done. The unit testing framework that we're using in our React application is called Jest. On the Jest website, they have documentation on exactly how to do this. All I did was click the search button and typed in debugging in VS Code. Since this is a React application, we can look at the documentation over here and just scroll down until you see if you're using Facebook's Create React app. So presumably you've created your application with NPX Create React app. And if you have, then we can use the following snippet. Now the snippet over here needs to be added to our launch JSON file. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And then within Visual Studio Code, what you're gonna to wanna to do is click on this button over here. It's got a play button with a little bug on it and it says run and debug. Then we're gonna click on create a launch JSON file. And I'm just gonna select Node.js. It doesn't really matter because we're gonna be replacing the contents here and then just paste in what we copied over here and save it. Now, if we go back to our Solution Explorer just for one second, you'll see that we have a new folder called VS Code, and inside VS Code is our launch JSON. Let's go back to the Run and Debug tab. If we go back here, now we're going to see that we have this dropdown, and this dropdown says Debug CRA Tests. Now, that name inside the dropdown is coming from our launch JSON file. It's actually getting the name from here. If you wanted to, we could just update that and remove the CRA part and just say Debug Tests. And then you can see the dropdown changes as well. Just in case you're wondering, the CRA that you saw over here stood for Create React App. When we click the play button over here for debug tests, it's going to run our tests in debug mode. What that means is that once it hits a breakpoint, it's going to stop execution of our code. But since we didn't set any, all it did was run all our tests. One other thing to note as well is you can see it says debug tests here. And in our terminal, when it launched it, it also says debug test over here on the side. Just like when we type npm test, our tests are also now watching for any changes. So I'm just going to hit enter over here so that it's just using the default watch and it's executing all the tests. You'll also notice that at the top of our screen, now we have this little menu bar that we can move around. This little menu bar has a pause, it has a stop, and it has this little drop down telling us what we're currently running. So we're currently running debug tests. So this name here and this name here, which comes from our launch.json that we created. Now, if we go ahead and click that stop button, you're gonna see that it will stop executing our tests over here. Now, if I go ahead and click play again, it will rerun them and we run them in the same console tab that I had open before. You'll also observe that it takes longer to run the tests since debugging is a little bit more intensive and it has to add lots of hooks in so that it will stop on our breakpoints. Let's take a look at adding a breakpoint. A breakpoint can go anywhere in our code. It can go in our tests or it could go in our actual code. Over here, we, right now we have our welcome.test.js file open. And what I'm gonna do is along the side of our code file over here, beside the numbers, you can see this little red dot. That little red dot is a breakpoint. So what I've done now is I've set up a breakpoint over here. If we go to our debug, we can see all our breakpoints listed over here in this section called breakpoints. Now, if I save the file or restart the test, it'll stop executing the test on that line. So as you can see, it stopped executing on this line over here. It's highlighted yellow, it has this little arrow, the line of code that it's currently highlighting right now hasn't executed yet. So in order to get this line to execute, we have these different functions over here. When you hit this button over here, it's gonna continue executing until it hits the next breakpoint or finishes executing all the tests. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click save again on this file. So here we are once again back at our breakpoint. 
Now I can step over this line with this one over here. You can see also the little help text when you put your cursor on top of it. So if I click that button, you see it goes to the next line. Now this line is executed. Now over here, what we can also do is I can step over this line again. Now after I stepped over this line, that means this line, line six is already executed. Since line six is executed, we can start to inspect it. One thing that I could do is I put my mouse over this and I can see the value of link element. Another way to see the value of link element is look over here on the side local variables. So we can see what the value of link element is. You can also create a watch. So let's say that we always had a link element. I could go ahead here and just add link element and type it in and hit enter and that would give us the element. But let's say that maybe I was interested in a particular property of the link element. What I could do then is then I could take my link element over here and I'll just double click on it again and just type out the name of the property that I want to show. So now my link element.innerHTML is showing welcome Isabel. There are multiple ways to see what the value of a property or field are from Visual Studio Code. You can do it directly by highlighting over, you can look at your variables, you can look at your watch. What's also cool is you do have this debug console. The debug console is very similar to developer tools in that over here we have console and we can type out this so we could see what this is, which is undefined. We could look at the link element if we want to and we could see that variable. And I could do exactly the same thing I did in the watch is I could type link element dot inner HTML and we can see the value there. It's also important to note that you can have multiple breakpoints. So I'm just going to finish executing those tests there. Then I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to put a breakpoint over here at the end of this function. So let me go ahead and save that. Now you can see that we stopped execution on line five over here. If I want to continue execution, I'm going to push this play button over here. And when I push that, it's going to stop at line seven because we have a breakpoint there. To further illustrate this, let's take a look at this. So we have a welcome component as well. Now that welcome component has a use effect method, which will get executed when the component first loads. So we're going to go back over here to our tests and we're just going to save it. So now our tests will stop executing over here at line five. Now when I click play, it's not going to go to line seven, but it's going to go inside the welcome component. So we're stopping here. I can inspect and take a look at the name. I can see that the name is lowercase. Now part of the code in our application is to go ahead and uppercase that first letter. So let's say that I wanted to get inside of this method over here. because That's the next thing that's going to get executed. Well, now I can push this down button over here and that's called step into. As you can see, we're now in the greeting.js file. If I go to our solution explorer over here, you can see greeting.js is located in utils. And then I'll go back to the debug here. So what we can do now is once we're inside here is we can continue to step over. I can step over all of these uh, fields that are being set over here. We can see, and if I highlight over, you can see the first letter is set to I and it's capitalized. You can see the rest of the name excluding the first letter from the name. And then you can see it combining the name. And then lastly, it creates this nice message. If I step over again, it's going to pop us out of that method and then back into set message. And then from there, I can go ahead and click play. And then we end up at the end. And then because of the component still rendering over there, we're going to pop back in here, click play again, and then the test will be finished running. And you can see that they're all passing to remove all your breakpoints. You can go into your debug menu over here, and then you can click this little X button. It'll remove all the breakpoints that we've set. Let's have a quick look at one of our tests for the greeting.js over here. So in the greeting.test.js, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a breakpoint right at the beginning of it. And then I'm just going to click save, and then it will hit that breakpoint. Now that it's hit this breakpoint over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to step over. So we're going to use the step over button. And we're going to step into that I showed you. So we're going to go inside the greeting method over here. And you can see that there's no breakpoint set. Then let's say that we're going through this method and it's a, maybe a little bit of a long one. And we're like, okay, well, I don't want to step over everything. And I haven't set up any other breakpoints yet. So I don't want to click play, but I still want to be inside here. What you can do is you can click step out. Step out will continue executing this method and pop us out of the greeting dot for method back to our greeting test over here. You can see we were inside here. It popped us back out and now we're on the next line. 
Lastly, here's an advanced feature that you can use with your breakpoints. So every time you click here, it adds a little red dot, but you can also right click on it and then click edit breakpoint and you can provide it with an expression. So we could say only stop on this line when the result is equal to some value. Um, we're not going to go through that example right now, but just want you to be aware that this is something advanced that you can do when you have a lot of code that's executing and you only want to break when a certain thing happens. So let's say that you're traversing over thousands of records and you only want to break when the name is equal to Bob. So when the name Bob comes up, you will stop and then you can start debugging your application from there. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and share. Just a friendly reminder, I think that subscribe button is somewhere over here on the corner of the screen. Thank you.